What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And today I want to show you my settings I use here on console. These are the best settings I have found on console so far. But just remember, everybody has their own personal preference. So some of the stuff may be different for each individual. Let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, first of all, controller button layout. I use bumper jumper tactical flipped. I always use flip on PlayStation so you can shoot with R1 and L1. I like bumper jumper so I can jump with L2 and throw my lethal equipment with X. This is going to be personal preference. Of course, if you want to play flipped or how you want to play. Tactical, I always recommend because that makes your melee on the circle and, of course, your crouch and prone on R3. If you have a scuff or something like that, uh, of course, you can map buttons to different different things. So you will definitely have to mess around with this, but this is just my personal preference for my button layout. Of course, everything else here is normal on these two. Uh, we get to horizontal stick sensitivity. I always go with one more horizontal than I do vertical. Right now, I'm on 5.4. During the beta, I got up to 7.6, so I was running 7 horizontal, 6 vertical. I've not quite got the feel for the game just yet. It feels a bit different than the beta movement-wise, so I'm still with 5.4. I'm probably going to bump this up this week to 6.5. That may be where I stay, but I'm not quite sure. But I, I would recommend trying at least 4.4. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can go a little bit lower, but when it comes to movement, it's always personal preference, really. And now that we do have ADS, you know, multipliers in here, um, for when you're high zoom or low zoom, depending on what kind of site you're using, it makes this a little bit easier to mess with. It's not going to control everything, but just mess around with these, bump it up to your, where you're comfortable. If it feels too fast, bump it back down one or two. So you're not uncomfortable with your speed of movement, looking up and side to side. Now, when it comes to ADS sensitivity, I always run mine lower uh, on the lower zoom. I'm running 0.76 right now. I would recommend running 0.75 to 9, uh, 0.90 uh, to begin with, and then you can get up towards 1 if you're more comfortable with a higher zoom, if you're using like a red dot or something. Now, when it comes to sniping or, or higher zoom scopes, I have this on 0.85. I really do feel like I'm probably going to go up closer to 1 because I feel like it needs to be a little bit quicker when I am sniping to move around with the scope. Uh, aim response curve. So far, everything I've tried, linear seems to feel the best for me. This could be different for anybody else. Standard and dynamic. Uh, I can't tell a huge difference between standard and linear. Dynamic, this does not feel right whatsoever for some reason. So I am sticking with linear. It does feel a little bit better than standard. I'm not quite sure exactly what these are even supposed to do, even with their description. It is, still does not really identify what they do correctly in my opinion especially uh the dynamic one it just does not feel right at all if somebody knows exactly what these do leave me a comment and let me know but i do feel like linear and standard are the two best linear just a little bit better than standard like i said this could be personal preference controller vibration i always turn off i do not like to be in a fight in multiplayer and have my controller vibrate that's just me it always throws off my shot and i feel like it's a little bit more uncomfortable to play with that vibration going aim assist i do have on standard i have tried all of them I really cannot tell a difference than in any of them, if you want me to be honest. Some people say they can. I don't know if it's a placebo effect or what, but I'm just using mine on the normal standard, what we're used to in every COD game. But if something else works better for you, definitely try that out. I have heard a few people say precision works better for them. Like I said, personally, I can't really tell a difference than in any of them. Uh, the weapon mount I have for ADS plus melee, I would recommend this or for ADS. The only problem with ADS, if anytime you're close to anything and there's a lot of clutter in this game, you will go ahead and start to lean. ADS plus melee now, of course, my melee is on circle, so that is a bit of a lot of action you're having to do just to lean. But I would recommend one of these two. Some people just want it disabled. They don't want to peek and lean, but it is a new mechanic in the game and it does work pretty well, so I'm using ADS plus melee. Now, to move from that mount position, I always have this enabled. You can disable it, but of course, you're going to have to hit the button again to move it uh, or to be able to come off the mount position. So I just go ahead and hit whenever I move, I will come off that mount position. Uh, aim down, sight behavior, all this stuff, of course, is going to be personal preference. When, until you get down here to use uh, reload behavior, I use tap to reload. Some people like tap to use. Depending on what you use to reload, is gonna, it's going to be the opposite to open a door. So... You know, just be careful with this because sometimes if you're around the door, you're trying to reload, you might open or close it. So just be aware of that as well. And everything else here is pretty much just standard. What was kind of, you know, default by game or when the game came out. But if you want to change either of these, you can. Slide behavior, I like hold better than tap because that's just kind of what I'm used to in past COD games. Now, when it comes to input device, of course, we're going to have controller set. It will automatically, you know, set that for you whenever you have 
you know, either a controller or a mouse and keyboard hooked to your console. Brightness, I use 49. I would recommend between 49 and 60. Anything above 60 seems really washed out. And the really bright areas of the map, because some areas have been brightened up, are hard to see enemies in if it's too bright. So I use 49. That's just my preference. It works the best for me. When it comes to safe area, I have it shrunk down to the lowest it'll go. I don't use anything any higher than, you know, the lowest setting. That way everything looks good with the HUD. Nothing's too zoomed out. Uh, film grain, always turn off. Tool tips, that's going to be personal preference. I do have them enabled. Subtitles, disabled or enabled, depending on if you need them for campaign or something like that. Uh, of course, your language. Colorblind type. Now, some people like these just because it changes the images over the people's heads, you know, uh, of your teammates or the enemies. Sometimes in COD, some COD games or some first-person shooters, some of these settings are better than just being disabled. But also, if you are colorblind, hopefully you can find some of these settings in here that work for you. I know there's a lot of people out there that are colorblind that play. Hopefully, they have enough settings. Sometimes some games have a lot, some don't. But I think these cover most of the colorblind kind of colors. So I think these should work for just about anyone. But like I said, mess around with them, even if you're not colorblind, because sometimes it does make the game visuals like name wise a little bit better than being just disabled um colorblind target of course you know you can depend on what you need for this i don't mess with any of this it stays for what you know what it was set at by default motion blur of course is disabled on both weapon and world i don't like motion blur or film grain in any game i always disable all of them of course when it comes to content filters this is going to be personal preference next thing is going to be audio now i know a lot of people are going to be wondering what is the best audio setting these did change since the beta. They had different names in the beta. It took me a while to figure out what each one was, and I'm still not quite sure if I have them all figured out just yet. I used headphones one in the beta. I'm assuming these right here are the headphone settings. Boost low is my personal favorite right now. Boost high also works really well, and boost works really well. Boost and boost high, I just do not like the sound of. It is really high-pitched sounds, and it will absolutely hurt your ears. This game is very, very loud when it comes to kill streaks, weapon fire, explosions. Boost low right now seems to be the best. I can still hear everything else really well, but I also hear footsteps really well. Now, some of these modes, like home theater, seems a little bit muffled, in my opinion. Dynamic home theater is like surround sound, you know, or studio preference. Some of these are work really well, but some of these are extremely ear piercing with headphones on. I use Astro A40 TRs and even with boost low, I have to turn my game volume down and I have to turn my voice volume up for my friends, you know, so I can hear them because right now it just, the game sound drowns everything out and boost low is my personal preference. Of course, everybody could be different, but I would recommend trying these three if you have not found your best setting yet. Of course, if you do not know, you can hit R3 and go ahead and go in here and test each one and see what sounds the best to you but these lower frequencies on boost low sound better in my personal opinion like i said you can still hear the footsteps really well of course i run my master volume all the way up music volume all the way down that's another personal preference thing i do not like the music volume going in multiplayer sometimes it will drown out what's happening you can turn this down to like 20 or 30 if you do kind of like the music but for me i just turn it off uh, of course dialogue volume i have down to 50 now this is going to be when kill streaks are called in, uh, sometimes your players or other players that you're in, are in game with, you'll hear their characters have call outs. Some of these things are helpful. Of course, you want to hear when an enemy has kill streaks. You want to hear call outs if somebody calls out a certain area, you know, a character calls out a certain area where an enemy is at. I turn this on to about, or I turn this down to about 50. That way I can still hear it, but it's not way too loud. Effects volume, of course, that's going to be gunfire, footsteps, just in game sound. I leave this turned up, even though I would like to turn it down just to get rid of that VTOL sound because the VTOL is so loud, it is ridiculous. But if you start to turn effects volume down, you will also be turning, you know, footstep sound and everything else down. So I'll leave that as 100. Like I said, you can mess with that to see if you can find a sweet spot. Juggernaut music, of course, I have enabled. Hit markers, you can cha change to classic or modern warfare or none. I just use the modern warfare version. Uh, of course, this voice chat, you can change this if you do, if you use in-game voice chat. Now, guys, I hope this helps you out. Like I said, a lot of this is personal preference, so kind of mess around with it. But hopefully, some of these settings, if you were curious about, this video will help you out. Of course, if you did like the video, make sure you hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you have the time, share the video. It helps the channel out a lot. Make sure you click the bell icon in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.